So uh, begin the video like that. I didn't. I didn't really mean to begin the video like that. I didn't really mean to um, begin the video in such a you know fucking egotistical way, just fucking flexing straight away for you guys to see. The video is very straightforward. Just, just talk like oh man. Just live life with no regrets. What's the point of living life if you if you have regrets? You know, I used to have a friend that would tell me, bro, cold approach is stupid. Cold approach is stupid and. Day, day game or whatever that, whatever, all these buzzwords, it's just pretty much just talking to a girl, it doesn't matter what time, as long as you talk to her, it doesn't matter if you, even if you get rejected, as long as you took that step to talk to her, that's enough, that's enough, and you, you might get rejected, you might be successful, honestly, that, that, that might be the case, the, the, the whole shtick, the whole important part is, you live life with zero regrets, that's the whole like, that's the whole idea behind it. Yeah. To get straight into semantics, I probably failed with like 16, 17 girls, to be honest. Like we were talking, she maybe liked me. I think she did like me, the looks, touching, I, I, I could tell, right? But I, I just kind of just like, my, my personality fucked up, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know if it's because of red pill, I don't know if it's because of TikTok, I don't know if because of degeneracy. But like, I just have this irresistible urge to like walk away. Like, what are you, like, who the fuck are you? What am I doing here? What's going on? No. And then, and then I fail. I've only been successful with like a handful of girls. And every single day, like I, I, I talk about it, I think about it. I, I regret over it, bro. I regret over it. Yeah. That's not what I want for you. That's not what I want for my future self. That's not what I want for anyone, to be honest. To live life with regrets. It's very, very... Heart, gut-wrenching place to be. You know, I was watching Rick and Morty recently. And, like... Morty really likes Jessica. But Jessica is a whore. She's a whole, she's a three or four, any, any name, any buzzword you can name under the sun, she is exactly that. And it isn't necessarily shaming, but our boy Morty deserves better. <laughs> no, no, Morty's pretty evil, actually. Maybe he does deserve Jessica. <laughs> like, I remember one of the scenes, though, like, so do you like it pissed? Do you like it pissed on? I can, I can tell you right now. Do you, do you like getting pissed on? <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, yummy. Some shit. It, it's, it's fucking crazy. I'll put it on now. I'm playing it in my head again and again and again. On, um... Unceremoniously. It, it often... is often in times where you are under a lot of stress. And you feel as if the world is ending. Everything almost collapses under each other. Like all your regrets, they condense and they explode. And they like they, they hit you like a truck. And even though what I'm about to do is just pretty much just boxing sparring, I'm always terrified before I spar. I've sparred a countless amount of times at this point. I've been knocked down. I've been I've been ble bleeding. I made someone else bleed and I've done complete domination on other people, but I've never got knocked down myself. To be perfectly honest with you. Um, actually... No, no, I don't. Th I, I haven't got one. I'm just scout my memory there. Uh, my memory might be a bit scuffed because <laughs> maybe CT get punched in the head. But um, yeah, I. I think about my failures a lot, and when you're alone, you have really like no friends. I pretty much have no friends. <laughs> Told you made it sad like that, but I talk to my grandma. Uh, I talk to my mom. I talk to my cat, but I'm, I'm pretty much working. I don't have much time to talk to my cat. I'm just working all the time. And I'm sure a lot of other young men, and I think young women as well, are on this same period in which we want something, we're grinding for it. We kind of not, we, we don't really have a social life. I have zero, I have zero social life. Like to actually create, I have zero. Like fucking, like a muscular, I mean, it like, it doesn't matter. I, no one's impressed. 
I'm not even impressed looking at myself in the mirror. There's fucking striations in my shoulder. I keep looking at it. They keep staring at me. But I, who, nobody's impressed. Nobody cares at the end of the day. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I wanted to lose weight for a myriad of reasons. But the biggest reason at the time was I was talking to a girl and she was really cute. And she's taller than me, actually. Um, I, got, I had other things to talk about. I don't know why. And I never felt like I was good enough for her, but she didn't give a fuck at the time. But because of that insecurity and because of like my, obviously I was fucking depressed and everything, you know, entertained and everything else like that. But that that was that was just the bolster. That was the booster. Like in Subway Surfers, you get like a head start booster at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was. The real rudimentary reason I wanted to lose weight and get into shape was, you know, honestly for girls and honestly to impress people and impress myself. It was to change my identity from that geek into like a more of like a Chad like individual. And perhaps I've achieved it. The physique that I wanted. Maybe I'll, I'll probably get a six pack. That'd be nice. I got a four pack already. Um, <sighs> Why am I fucking up it so. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I don't care. I don't know who said this, but this person was kind of smart, kind of. This person said, life is long and short, depending on the way you look at it. I was like, yeah. I keep thinking about that first man, first man um, paradigm as well, like, bro, you are going to die one day. He, first man, Chris Sturmey, first man, he said something like, extremely interesting to me. And he was like, yeah, you, you have to be 18 knowing you will die one day. You have to be 18 understanding that this shit will end. And the big thing about life is that you're, just, you're, all, you're all in, right? One of those videos, those hope core videos, those core core videos. You're all in on life. It's, it's the truth. That guy making the fucking edit, he's all in on life. He's spending his time making edits on TikTok. If you're a dumbass to consume it, to watch more TikToks. That's exactly what hap is happening. I also saw this one um, like 50 year old dude before, like a he's Sky Streamer's dad. And this guy Streamer's like in his 20s. And the streamer's dad was like, bro, go talk to her. Like, like, literally go talk to her. You never know what, what will happen. Maybe she's a blonde, maybe if she's a freak. Ask if she's a freak. She's gonna add you to the fucking... <laughs> The body count list, bro. Like, <laughs> dumb. My fear of sparring has decreased a lot, but it's something I would not like to do. I think it's fair enough to say. Don't really want to get into the ring, punch someone in the face, and then punch me in the face. I keep thinking about the meme. He's not built for this. I really think that uh, I'm not really built for this sport. To be honest, the stress, the anxiety. I've invested so much though, and I don't want to look at it at like a sunk cost fallacy. I would like to, at some point, I want to take a fight. That's for sure, an amateur fight, and I would like to take. Maybe a white collar fight, or I could go and do. I could just go on my amateur career, career and go into the pros. It's not. It's not hard to do, guys. It's, it really isn't. Like, it's not difficult for professionals. So you get in the ring, you punch someone in the face. Are you good at punching someone in the face? Okay, you can become great. No, you can't become great, and you'll be a Johnny Man forever. That's pretty much boxing, in my opinion. You get in the ring, you start punching someone. It isn't. It isn't like some extremely noble feat. It is very stressful, and it is like it's very gutsy, it's very ballsy. But at some point, like, hold on, at some point, I'm not sure. So maybe at some point, when I was numb, I don't, people still get nerves after this. I get nerves for sparring. I can't. I can't. Like, I can't. 
fathom the nerves I would get for a fight. A professional fight. I have to lose glasses while well. I have to fucking become like this forever. It lays eye. I keep thinking about that meme, he's not built for this. And I completely like agree with that. I'm not built for this, bro. And there's so much time, so much money, so much like, so much fear, so much anxiety, so much everything. When you fight, it's it's like a it's like a hit of every emotion. You want you want a, you want a powerful drug. You want the most potent drugs out there, bro. It's the fucking exhilaration and fucking adrenaline you get from fighting. After you feel you feel like you're you're worth a million bucks, you, unless you get like knocked down, unless you get beaten up, you feel like a million bucks. And I tried to rationalize it before with like, the regret part. Am I going to regret not recording it, not getting content, not studying it, not becoming better, and you know, not becoming the individual I was supposed to become, and not becoming this? And I'm like, like I, I think about that type of shit. I don't know. My answer is I don't know. My friend told me something interesting. He said, "If you doubt yourself now, what can you amount to? And you've achieved nothing so far." If you die yourself now, what's the point? And yeah, fair enough, bro. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I straight up don't know. Make a bunch of money. I keep thinking about like the Naoya anyway thing. By the time Naoya anyway hits 35, he's out of the game. Maybe when he's 40, he's the one who's right. But he made so much money as well. He made like 10 mil. And he lives in, from like a, a singular fight when he won the Muhammad Ali trophy from, I think it was Nonita Donair. He knocked him out in like a second. He, uh, he earned like 10 mil, and in Japan, it's much cheaper than, you know, America, for example. It isn't cheap, per se, but it's much cheaper in comparison. I don't know if fucking serve real estate. I really like waste that one out. That's what broke. I'm gonna go back to the original point I was making, sort of boxing and sparring, because that it just pervades my mind. Sorry guys, it's hit with every emotion, fear, anxiety, happiness, sadness, it's everything. I'll I'll go back to the girls thing. The whole point of cold approach and the whole point of Riz or whatever. I don't know why I heard it from my nephew, bro. I saw the memes, but I was like the first person I heard it from wasn't like a real person. It was literally my little cousin. Telling me W Riz, W Riz, or his like iPad. He was watching TikTok. <sighs> I'm really tired. I'm watching that. Oh, this. He was watching TikTok on his phone. And he was playing iPad Pocket Edition, or Minecraft Pocket Edition, iPad Pocket Edition. He was playing Minecraft Pocket Edition on his uh, on his iPad along with Roblox. Fucking multitasking and shit. I was thinking about like, yeah, next generation's fucked. <laughs> They'll probably grow out of it. They'll probably see like a bit cringy growing up. Because um, life hits you hard, and you must come accept the reality, pretty much of life. Like you know, you're not gonna be a fucking millionaire uh, doing bullshit activities. You have to, you know, provide million dollars worth of value to get millions. The whole goal of the movement is to have no, no stress and regret later on in life. Because when you're 62 and you're really old and you're raggedy and your arms and your hands are becoming wrinkled and your, your wrinkles in your face are visible and you're looking back, maybe you're, you're retired right now, maybe. You know, you got a bit of money, you're retired. Or your kids, you know, maybe you had a bunch of kids and then they felt bad for you so they retired your ass. Okay, work really hard. It's very common. You look back on life and you reflect on back on life and you just think to yourself, yeah, yeah I, I lived my life the best I could possibly live it. That's very, very difficult to say. 
because a lot of young guys and young girls even in fucking the general whole shit like fucking three or four shit and I think I think that's it's 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 semi common it's semi common maybe like a medium level of common maybe like an uncommon like a rarity like it isn't it isn't extremely common I think with with um media and social media and all these things they make us seem more divided than we are a lot of people are very very nice and cordial it's very rare you will see someone genuinely rude and yeah I, that that's pretty much the, what i can describe it as it, it most girls aren't hoes i genuinely believe that but most girls are fucking around and waste time probably doing the dumb shit which can lead to them potentially being hoes like uh, the lowest hanging fruit type shit You know that Zerka guy, even though he's kind of a fucking idiot. This is something interesting. And that was like kind of black pillish. But it's pretty not these black pillish, it's like these buzzwords. I keep saying buzzwords, but they are buzzwords. Like black and red pill. The objective truth is the objective truth. It's more red pill than anything. Like you will be a millionaire. But that girl you wanted back in high school, she'll still be like a hoe. And you'll probably never get her. And if you do get her, it's like, and you, you do look smacks, and you've got the fucking muscle, and you've got the money, and you've got the money, money muscle mindset, like Brandon Carter says, and, you know, you got everything in self-improvement in order, meditation, you're doing it for like fucking six years, no fat, whatever it is, and you're a focused individual who's, you know, enjoying life now, you, you're enjoying the fruits of your labor, bro, by the time, like, you get her, you're 30, she's 32, looking old she's a bit of a hole but then she shows interest in you and then what most guys crumble on that bro because they because what ha is happening to them is like still kind of foreign men men hear that girls like them girls have a crush on them and they think to themselves yo stop fucking pranking me bro stop, stop lying to me what, what's, what's the math question What's the math question? <laughs> Man, like, I remember this girl called, um, should I, should I, call, should I say, you fucking will find her. This girl called Ellen. You, you'll never find her. But apparently in, that's, this is my, one of my biggest regrets. I fucking, I think much a lot. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. Another girl, um, was, was her name? I don't know what her name was. It wasn't Stacy. I don't know, I don't know fucking Stacy. The fucking the name is Stacy. That's like a two thousand name, bro. But like she was like a like a blonde girl, was in sports and stuff. And I think she was a little bit interested in me at the time as well. And I just fuck I like like I, I could see the cues, but I chose to ignore them. It fucked me up. It really did. This girl Ellen, like this, this other guy, like I, I pretty much never talked to you. Like you know, you know, you know that girl Ellen, Ellen she really likes you. She's a crush on you. Like shut the fuck up, bro. I, I was gonna say his name. Just I'm gonna call him Steven. Shut the fuck up, Steven. It's a fucking gossiping, bro. And then I just went on my business. I'm sure. I, I could have said like, but that's the biggest problem. Like I, at that point, I'm just. I wish you, I could have just said hi, and I could have just got my question answered. So I heard you like me. Yes or no? No? <sighs> Regret out the window. You, this is what I'm talking about, guys. It's been... <laughs> it's been three years. I'm like 15, 16, man. I'm 18 turning 19. 10th of July next year, man. I still regret to this day, and that's the, that's just one out of sixteen. I don't know if the seventeen one counts, but I give the fuck. I'll just say seventeen. Yeah. Sixteen. Say face. Every guy has a story like this. 
every guy and girls as well there used to be a meme going around like oh girls have no game but girls don't need to have game that's what you're supposed to have like what the fuck is this dumb shit like girls would rather die on a hill they want to die with like 15 cats than ask out a guy they like that's that that's the ego of girls the ego of women how the fuck are you gonna, gonna you can't change them a, a root like a root like cause i don't know root cause but like our behavior is genetically determined perhaps influenced by the environment as well but there are certain things that you just simply can't change. Like, I heard this, I heard this meme before. The memes are like, they're kind of like, like a funny reflection back on the world as it is. It was like, oh my god, but women like are feminists and women change and women are LGBTQ and, and you know, tweaking. I, I mean, <laughs> women are, you know, women are different now, women are progressive. Why can't men change? And then a lot of pressure goes on men to change, and a lot of men do change because they're fucking geeks. But the majority, silent majority of men who are just like don't give a fuck, they don't change. What was that meme again? Like men will live with nothing and see it's okay. Yeah, we don't change. Like we don't. We don't who gives a fuck? I don't care. Like so, so I was with my friend um, yesterday. He was like, yeah. What the fuck is my cat doing, bro? He's licking the... Lick some plastic in there, man. I forgot my exact train of thought, but I, I'm gonna move on anyway. You know, Hamza says something interesting. He said, there'll be two guys when it comes to liking a girl. Two different types of guys. Very different. One guy will like the girl, shy away, and then call that girl his crush for a while. Another guy will just walk up straight to the girl and get her. Because he believed he deserved her. Which... Guy, are you? Bro, my cat vomits all the time, and then he, like he's always licking plastic all the time. Like, of course you're fucking vomiting, you dumb shit. Fucking vomit how dirty my room is. This crush thing is stupid. It's for children. No, when I was a fucking kid, I was kind of retarded. I mean, I was kind of, I was kind of, I was kind of on my own bit. I was reading Diary of a Kid. I have the fucking books here. Diary of a Kid. That's what I was doing. I think I was a bit of a late bloomer, can't I? What happened? Give me this shit, Aladdin. What the fuck? Fuck that shit. You know, fear is normal. I guess I already want you guys to like appreciate that. There's guys who've just conquered their fear. My nose is so fucking blocked. It's actually crazy. I can't breathe, I'm struggling to breathe. And after going on like a, a fly of stairs, my cardio is shit. And also my nose is blocked to high hell. I have many regrets similar to this, many stories similar to this. It's not a surprise really. Like I said before previously, every single guy has a story like this. The whole... The whole goal, the whole message that I want to tell you guys, 
So you especially. And to take the chance when it's given to you. Take the opportunity when it's given to you. Doesn't matter if she's an ugly girl, extremely pretty girl, that's out of your league. What? Yeah. But what about that ugly guy who gets like a really, with a really hot girl? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't, guys. I don't know, a fucking triangle with an haircut. Live life, no regrets. See you next video. Leave me your guy in your car.